Oh, that thing is heavy. Okay, Darren, let's get to our first review. Uh, negative. Actually, I thought, seeing as Hex is over at E3, playing all the very latest games, that we could take the opportunity to look at what goes into making a game. Once again, Darren, this is something you didn't discuss with me beforehand. We're just the, going into it. The, the Spawnlings are always writing in, asking us how to make games. Well, that is true. And there are so many ways to make games and so many skills to learn, it can seem overwhelming. You know what, Darren? I actually think this is a very good idea. Let's do it. Affirmative. Now, to make things a little easier, we're going to look at three of the tools you can use. As with game systems, there's no one tool or programming language that's the best. They all have strengths and weaknesses, and they all have their uses. To clarify, a programming language is a system for making computer programs where every action is spelled out exactly with special words and symbols. Uh, some of your mumbots or dadbots may have dabbled with the language known as BASIC back when they were spawnlings. Yes, but if you want to make big, sophisticated, proper games, you'll need to learn a proper language, such as C++ or Python. But you don't have to jump into the deep end with all that because you can start with a BASIC game maker called Scratch. Scratch lets you play around with programs as if they were made of building blocks. By dragging and dropping the coloured blocks on the left, you can make simple games with Scratch's mascot, Scratch the Cat. Or you can paint or import art of your own. Behold, Darren, for I have made a game in Scratch, both to demonstrate its ease of use, but also my supreme cleverness. Observe how when the game begins, the little robot is in the Darren cave. His objective? To reach French Perth. For the last time, there's no such place as French Perth. Well, A, Darren, that's a matter of opinion, and B, it doesn't have to be realistic because it's a game. Now, see how I've set up these little rules under scripts. When you press the up arrow, the robot goes up by 10 pixels. When you press the down arrow, he goes down by 10. Same for left and right. Both the robot and French Perth are game objects, and they're called sprites. I've set a rule for French Perth too. Being a city, it can't move, obviously. But when the robot arrives, the people are pleased to see him. And they say, wee oui, wee. Oui. Uh, what kind of challenge does your game offer? Ah, now this is fun, Darren. See, I've created an obstacle between French Perth and the robot. A ghost monster! If you touch the ghost monster, you get sent right back to your cave. Oh no! <laughs> uh, did it take you long to make? Not really, Darren, and that's because there are heaps of guides online, so if you get stuck, help is only a click away. And the latest version of Scratch also has content sharing built in, so you can try out games made by people from all over the world. If you're an absolute beginner, it's a great place to start. I give Scratch eight rubber chickens. Yes, it can be a little glitchy, but I'm with you, Darren. I'm giving it eight out of ten as well. Next, Codea. This tool is a little more in-depth because it deals with a proper programming language, Lua. Lua was created in Brazil and it's named after the Portuguese word for moon. The Codia software package serves as both an editor and interpreter. It has everything you need to get started. The package is geared towards creating 2D and 3D graphical effects. Put simply, Codia is designed for making games. I like what they've done here, Darren. They've made Codia easy to use. Keywords are automatically colour-coded as you type your program, so they're easier to read. My main issue with this is that you're typing out programs on a tablet, so you don't have the ease of use of a standard keyboard. You could use a wireless Bluetooth one, I assume, but even so, it's quite difficult selecting text and moving the cursor. Oh, I got a little bit frustrated, Darren. Mm -hmm. Then there's the issue of concentration. When programming, a human, such as Barjo, really needs his brain switched on and focused. You need to be sitting at a desk, and for that, again, you may as well use a proper PC. The package comes with some sample programs, which is great. You can look at the code and see how they work. Sort of like looking at test answers. There are some sample sprites, but I did find the graphics editor a bit fiddly. However, overall, for making games on the go, this is pretty amazing, so I'm giving it 8 out of 10 rubber chickens. Mm, I found it a bit too frustrating. Six from me. Uh, finally, Game Maker. An integrated development tool, Game Maker has been used to create some actual hit games, such as Spelunky. On the surface, the interface for Game Maker looks a bit like Scratch, with straightforward drop-down menus for adding backgrounds and sprites and so on. The difference is that while there are buttons for setting simple rules, you can also add more precise or more complicated rules by entering exact instructions in the Game Maker's scripting language, GML. I found that Game Maker ran a lot smoother than Scratch, and you can clearly do a lot more with it. You can start by thinking about what kind of games you want to make first, and then learn the code as you go. Your creations in Game Maker can be exported as standalone programs, so you could give them to your friends. The fancy professional versions of Game Maker cost money, but the basic version is free, and that's all you really need to get started. 
The built-in tutorial is excellent, and when specific questions occur to you, there are plenty of online guides. Yes, it's a powerful piece of software, but it's also balanced with ease of use, so I think this is fantastic, Darren. I'm giving it 9 out of 10 rubber chickens. I shall also give it 9 rubber chickens. Oh, oh Bajo, we should also mention a computer specially designed for learning how to program, the Raspberry Pi. Oh, yeah, Pi. Mm. In fact, Goose caught up with a Master Pi programmer who is only 9 years old. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you.